On the early morning of 3rd November 1988, Abdullah Latifi, a Maldivian businessman, along with 80 heavily armed Sri Lankan Tamil mercenaries, landed at Mali, the capital of Maldives. They were on a mission to overthrow President Abdul Gayum's government. Even though the mercenaries were small in number, it was more than enough as Maldives did not have a big army or air force. What will President Gayum do? Run away or stay back and fight? Let's find out. Maldives was a small fishing village when it got independence from the British in 1965. Maldives became a republic in 1968 with Ibrahim Nasir as its first president. Fish export was its main industry. Tourism picked up in the 1970s and it became the mainstay of its economy. But Maldivian government was not stable. By 1978, political infighting and coups led the country's first president, Ibrahim Nasir, to escape to Singapore. He took millions of dollars from the treasury. In 1978, Abdul Gayum became the second president of Maldives. Nasir's supporters orchestrated a series of coups in 1980 and 1983, but were not successful. In 1988, Abdullah Latifi, a Maldivian businessman, struck a deal with Umar Mageshwaran, the leader of the Tamil rebel group PLOTE, which is a breakaway group of the deadly LTTE. Umar Mageshwaran and his Tamil rebels were well-trained, battle-hardened veterans. They also had a huge stockpile of sophisticated weapons. Latafi and his rebels will forcibly overthrow Abdul Gayum's government. After the coup, Abdul Latafi will become the president and in return, Maheshwaran and his rebels will be given some islands where they can reside and trade in guns, drugs, gold, etc. Maldives has something called the National Security Service, which combines the Maldivian Army, Air Force, Police and the Fire Brigade. The National Security Service had 2,000 men, of which 200 were present in the capital, Mali. But these men were poorly trained and had no experience. They were no match to the battle-hardened Tamil rebel fighters. Maheshwaran's fighters carried AK-47 rifles, grenades, small arms and mortars. So Abdul Latufi and 80 heavily armed Tamil mercenaries boarded two speedboats taken over forcefully. On the early morning of 3rd November 1988, they reached Mali, the Maldives capital. One boat went to the presidential jetty and the other to the commercial harbour. On landing, one group went straight to the radio and telecommunication center and captured it. The rebels fired on anyone who stopped them. They also spread out and started looting. The second group went for the presidential palace where President Gayum and his family was residing. President Gayum, escorted by the Maldivian National Security Advisor and Defense Minister, escaped to a safe house. The rebels took control of the presidential palace and President Gayum was technically now ousted from power. President and his family managed to hide in a safe house, but the rebels were looking for him everywhere. From his hideout, President Gayum started asking different countries for help. He first called Pakistan, Sri Lanka and Singapore. All declined, stating their inability to come from such a long distance. The US also declined as their nearest base in Diego Garcia was more than 1000 kilometers away and will take 2 to 3 days to come to rescue. UK also declined but advised Gayum to ask India. Gayum then called India. Indian Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi immediately called a meeting of the top military brass and within an hour gave the orders to help Maldives. The Indian military launched Operation Cactus. The Indian military had only a few tourist maps of Maldives to plan their operation. The operation will be headed by Brigadier Farooq Bulsara and will land a contingent of para commandos at the Hulhule airport. On landing, one group of para-commandos will stay back and secure the airport. Another group will be involved in distracting the attention of the rebels. The third group will proceed to Mali, attack the rebels and secure the Maldivian president. Within a few hours and in total secrecy, the Indian Army, in coordination with the Indian Air Force, assembled 500 para-commandos along with their weapons and equipment. Just nine hours after receiving the SOS call from the Maldivian president Gayum, Two IL-76 transport planes carrying all the para-commandos and their commanding officer took off from the Agra airbase. Operation Cactus has begun. The Indian Special Forces flew 2,000 kilometers non-stop and finally landed at Hulhuli Airport. The rebels had no idea they were there. On landing, as per the plan, one group of para-commandos stayed back and secured the airport. Another group took a boat and proceeded to Mali. The third group of commandos drove a speedboat along the coast drawing the rebels' attention. 
The rebels quickly identified the Indian soldiers and began to fire on the moving speedboat. This was a diversionary tactic deployed by the Indian army. Meanwhile, the main group of paracommandos arrived on the Malay mainland. They began searching for President Gayoom. On their way, they were engaged in a fierce gunfight with the rebels. The Indian troops finally managed to contact the Maldivian defense minister, who then took them to the president. The president felt greatly relieved on seeing Indian soldiers. On sensing the superior firepower and engagement of the Indian special forces, the rebels began to flee. Latafi along with some 70 other rebels and seven hostages took a ship off the Malay harbor and secretly left Maldives. But he was soon spotted by the Indian army. The Indian army fired rockets at the escaping ship. One of the rockets hit and disabled the ship's propellers, but it continued to drift away. The Indian military now engaged the Indian Navy. Two naval ships, INS Godavari and INS Bitwa, moved to intercept the escaping ship. The naval ships sent in their helicopters, which started a heavy mission gun fire. The rebels knew they were fighting a losing battle. Some rebels jumped off the sea, but Abdul Latafi and remaining rebels surrendered. However, Uma Mageshwaran, the rebel leader, managed to escape. Meanwhile, an American task force arrived near Maldives for help. They asked President Gayoom for permission to land its aircraft at Hulhule Airport. But as the job was already finished, the president denied entry and the US task force turned back. All the arrested mercenaries, along with their loot, were handed over to the Maldivian authorities. It took India just a few hours to complete the mission and hand over the besieged island nation back to its people. A total of 19 people were killed and 39 injured. Abdul Latafi was given life sentence and is still alive serving his sentence. Maheshwaran was killed in a gang war in Colombo one year after Operation Cactus. India's quick action was praised by world leaders. British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher stated, Thank God for India. President Gayoom's government has been saved. US President Ronald Reagan called India's action as a valuable contribution to regional stability. If you like this video, please subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.